So what we're going to be looking at inside of this video is we're going to be looking at quantitative research. And we're going to be actually looking at the kinds of questions that we can ask and answer utilizing quantitative research and get some basic definitions that are going to be really important for you to understand what it is that we do inside of this kind of uh, field. So there are three basic kinds of research. We'll have experimental research, descriptive research, and qualitative research. Experimental research is going to understand the whys of scientific relationships. It seeks to understand and categorize cause and effect relationships. The second kind is descriptive research, and that provides a characteristic characterization of groups. We want to like do, go out and describe something, all right? And we're going to oftentimes do that with like averages or proportions. And then we have qualitative research. And qualitative research is something that we're not going to be doing inside of this class, but it's also actually very, very valuable for people who do um, any kind of health research where you're at the bedside, right? Nurses, occupational therapists, physical therapists, they utilize qualitative research in order to give context. Because oftentimes when they're doing their jobs, what it is is it's going to be, end up being very context specific. It's super valuable, it actually is incredibly interesting, and it can be very beneficial for practitioners, but it's not actually the focus of this class. We're going to focus in on the other two because those are the ones that we can use quantitative methods for. Qualitative research, we use totally different methods, and as I said before, really beneficial, but not the, uh, the topic of this class. So let's take a look at the two different kinds of quantitative research. On the one hand, we have descriptive research. So descriptive research looks at things like, what is the average of a particular quality for a population? Or it might look at what proportion of a population has a particular characteristic. Experimental research, which is going to be the one that you're going to be doing your projects on, it's going to be an experiment, you'll just develop an experiment, will look at, does one quantity cause change in another quantity? Or do certain characteristics lead to increases or decreases in particular quantities or changes in characteristics? Or is there an association between two quantities? Or we might look at, do individuals with a particular characteristic also show other characteristics? Like, do they happen together? Okay? And that's the kind of thing that we're going to look at in experimental research. That's all cause and effect. We'll talk a lot more about descriptive research, and what we talk about in just a minute is going to apply to descriptive research, but I'm going to kind of focus in on experimental research as you start to develop and define what your final project is going to look like. Okay? What we're essentially doing with experimental research is looking again for cause and effect. So in experimental research, we've got two major ideas that we want to always keep in mind. One, we're looking for causation. We're looking to prove causation eventually. Now it's actually very tricky to do, okay? And we are never really gonna do that with hypothesis and hypothesis testing, but the overall idea is I wanna know if X causes Y, okay? And all of our experimental research questions that we're going to be looking at in this class, they're going to be able to be answered with either a yes or a no. Okay? So we're always going to be looking to answer our questions utilizing yes and no. In order to do that, we're going to actually need some definitions that will help us to think about these things a little more technically. And so let's look at variables. So a variable is a property or an attribute that takes two or more values. Okay? So when we talk about a variable, we're going to say it's the thing, right? And then there are values for those variables. Say, for example, we look at hair color and we might say, okay, so black is a hair color, brown is a hair color, white, gray, blonde, red. These are hair colors, okay? And so the variable is hair color and then we have all of the different colors that it can take as values that the variables take. So if we looked at some examples from health research, we might see something like a type of therapy, okay? We might say, okay, so we've got yoga therapy, we've got a skateboard therapy, and we have no therapy. Those are types of therapy. So thera type of therapy is the overall variable, and then the different ver uh, therapies that we put in there, those are the values for the variable. Millimeters of range of motion, another one. Scores on a depression scale, right? 45, 67, 32, 72. Those scores, they're the values that the variables take. And then we might actually make some interpretations off of them, but the interpretations are not actually the variable score on the depression scale. Or minutes of attention. Six minutes, seven minutes, three minutes, eight minutes. We might actually say something about what those minutes mean, but that's not actually the value for the variable. So now that we understand what a variable actually is, we want to look at some different types of variables. There are going to be two major types of variables that we want to look at. 
we're going to look at quantitative variables. And what a quantitative variable is, anything that can be measured or counted. So it can be placed in order. There are bigger or smaller objects. There are bigger or smaller values for the variable. Okay, So like millimeters of range of motion, 3 millimeters is less than 7 millimeters. 4 millimeters is more than 2 millimeters. Notice it can be order, right? Or depression score. 72 is a higher depression score than 61. 33 is a higher depression score than 11. 53 is a lower depression score than 92. Or we might look at minutes on task, right? Or blood pressure. Notice that in each one of these cases, it's not just that it takes a number, okay? It's that it can be measured, it can be counted, and it can be put in order. On the other hand, we have this idea of a categorical variable, and a categorical variable is a bit different. It takes labels. We can't actually order categorical variables. So like, for example, type of therapy, you might say yoga therapy, skateboard therapy, no therapy. You might be tempted to put them in an order and say, well, yoga therapy is better than skateboard therapy, or skateboard therapy is better than yoga therapy. But in actuality, one is not bigger or better than the other. Right? They're just labels that we put upon the therapy. Or like presence of the disease. You're going to see these a lot. Yes, they have the disease. No, they do not have the disease. Okay? Yes and no, as answers, right, when we're going out and we're collecting data, are in fact examples of categorical variables. Now, the other characterization that we want to get for variables is this thing called explanatory and response variables. So explanatory and response variables are when we want to conduct experimental research, we need to assign a variable as the cause variable and another one as the effect variable, okay? Because remember, we're interested in cause and effect. So the explanatory variable is hypothesized to be the variable that is causing the change in the response variable. So our cause idea is this explanatory variable. And what that means is that the response variable then is the effect variable, okay? So when we change the explanatory variable, do we see a change in the response variable? Change explanatory variable first, measure response variable second, okay, to see if there actually is a change in it, all right? And the one that we're going to manipulate, the one that we're actually going to, we're looking to see if we get a change in the response, but the one that we're actually going to manipulate is going to be the explanatory variable. I add the treatment, I take the treatment away, I increase the dosage, I decrease the dosage, right? Those are our explanatory variables being changed, and then we're going to see what happens in the response. And if you kind of think it through, it makes sense. It makes sense that all we want to do is we want to see whether or not we have the treatment or not. We want to see if we increase the dosage or not, and everything else here is what we're testing. The change in the response is going to be the thing that actually ends up getting tested. So let's look at an example. Will the use of yoga decrease the incidence of depression in Alzheimer's patients? So our explanatory variable here is yoga or no yoga, or like the number of yoga sessions. That's the thing that I'm going to manipulate. That's the thing that I'm going to change. Then I'm going to see whether or not I get a decrease or increase in the incidence of, incidence of depression. Does the individual have depression or no depression? Second idea, will the use of bed rails decrease the number of falls for residents of a skilled nursing facility in a three month period? So my explanatory variable is the presence of the bed rails, right? Add the bed rails in, take the bed rails out, and then we're gonna see what happens to the number of falls. So change the presence of bed rails, and then see, do we get a number of falls increasing or we get the number of falls decreasing? So let's kind of put this all together to kind of think through what the purpose of our experimental quantitative research is. Okay, and how these things inform the kind of questions that we can ask. So on the one hand, experimental research seeks to determine if changing an explanatory variable leads to changes in the response variable. These variables can be either categorical or quantitative. But all of our questions must be answered in the form of yes or no. When I added in the treatment, did it cause a change? Okay, if I increase the dosage, did I see an increase or a decrease inside of whatever thing that I was looking at, okay? And all those questions are merely questions of yes and no. So when we ask quantitative research questions or experimental quantitative research questions, okay, we're really looking for questions that we can answer with yes and no. So here's some examples. One, will the use of yoga decrease the incidence of depression in Alzheimer's patients? 
We already talked about the explanatory and the response, and the question is, is whether or not we'll get a yes or we'll get a no. How about, will the use of bed rails decrease the number of falls for residents of a skilled nursing facility in a three-month period? Yes, no. What's the explanatory? What's the response? How about, does an increase in the use of a drug improve memory in ADHD students? Or is the use of in-class occupational therapy superior to pull out OT for improving attention in early age elementary school children? What you should do for those last two is figure out what is the explanatory, what is the response, and notice they can both be answered with yes and no. Once we get answers to those questions, answers to the yes and no, what we'll see is one, it'll tell us whether or not our hypothesis is correct or not. We're gonna get an absolute, yes, our hypothesis is correct, or no, I don't have enough evidence to show that my hypothesis is correct. Or, yes, my hypothesis should be rejected, or no, I don't have enough evidence to reject my hypothesis. Either way, okay? And in addition to that, it'll help us to understand whether or not we're gonna strengthen our underlying theories or whether or not our, the findings for our experiments will in fact weaken our experimental theories, okay? So that completes this entirety of the slideshow. In this slideshow, we looked through what kind of research that we were gonna be doing, what was a variable, different kinds of variables, okay? What is an explanatory and response variable, and the kinds of questions that we're gonna be answering inside of this class. This completes the lecture.